All right, so in this video, we're going to work through another free response question off of the AP exam. This question came off of an, an old released AP exam, and it was question number four, the year that it was on the exam, which means that it was one with no, without calculators. And this question appeared on both the AB and the BC versions of the exam. So first, let's take a look at what we're given. So we're given a graph of a function f, and it consists of three line segments. One, two, three. So f is a piecewise function. Now let's take a look at part a. So we're going to let g be the function given by g of x is the integral of f of t from negative 4 to x. Now for g of negative 1, g prime of negative 1, and g double prime of negative 1, we want to find the value or state that it doesn't exist. So let's start with g of negative 1. Let me go ahead and plug negative 1 into that integral that I'm given. So I want to integrate f of t from negative 4 to negative 1. Now let's look at my picture. I don't know exactly what f of t is, but I am given a graph of it. So remember, we can think of a definite integral of a function as like the area under the curve. So let's take a look at negative 1 and negative 4 on our function. So here's negative 1. So I have the point negative 1, negative 2. And there's negative 4. And I have the point negative 4, negative 3. And I want to find this area. Well, I know that the area is going to be negative because it's under the x-axis. But let's think about what kind of shape it is. Trapezoid, right? Let's go ahead and label the lengths of our sides. I know I have 2 here because the y-coordinate of the point at negative 1 is negative 2. I know this section is 3, right? There's 3 difference between negative 1 and negative 4. And then my other side length here is also going to be 3, because I'm looking at negative 4 and negative 3. So let's recall the formula for defining the area of a trapezoid. It is one half times the length of base 1 plus the length of base 2 times the height. So in this picture, I can think of the height as 3. And then I can think of the two bases as 2 and 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So 1 half times 5 times 3. So that area is going to be 15 halves. So if I'm talking about g of negative 1, I'm going to say g of negative 1 is negative 15 halves. Like that. So now let's take a look at g prime of negative 1. Let's think about what g prime of negative 1 means. Well, if g is the integral from negative 4 to x of f of t, then the derivative of g is going to be f of x. So I have g of negative 1. So let me plug in f of negative 1. And now I can just use the graph that I'm given. So let's take a look. I have a point negative 1, negative 2. So that means g prime of negative 1 is negative 2. Now let's look at g double prime of negative 1. So if g prime of x is f of x, then it would follow that the second derivative of g is the first derivative of x, right? So I'm looking at g double prime of negative 1. So I want to look at f prime of negative 1. Again, let's take a look at our picture. Here is x equals negative 1. 
and it's actually where two of the line segments meet. So if I look, I kind of have a point in the function right there. So it's actually going to be non-differentiable at that point, which means that g double prime of negative 1 doesn't exist. So I've got my three answers for part A. Let's move on to part B. So we're still looking at the function g. And part B wants us to find the x-coordinate of each, each point of inflection of the graph of g on the open interval, negative 4 is less than x is less than 3. And then they want us to explain. So let's recall g of x equals integral from negative 4 to x of f of t. So let's think about it. If we want to find a point of inflection, that's going to be where the second derivative of g equals 0, right? Well, in part A, we figured out that the second derivative of g is like the derivative of x, of f. Excuse me. So when I'm asking for points of inflection for g, I actually want to know where f prime of x equals 0. So let's take a look at our graph. Well, I know nothing here or here, but actually a better way to think about where f prime of x equals 0 is where f switches from increasing to decreasing. And since we have a piecewise function here, that definition is actually going to be the best one to use. So we can see that f increases all the way from negative 4 to 1 and then starts to decrease again after 1. So it would make sense that f prime of x equals 0 when x equals 1, right? Increasing, increasing, decreasing. So x equals 1. And if you were doing this on the exam, it would really be better to write out that the inflection point of the graph of g is where x equals 1. But I don't really have no space. Well. Now let's move on to part C. So now we're introducing a new function, h. And we want to define h as the integral from x to 3 of f of t. So the same function we've been working with. And C asked us to find all x values on the closed interval, negative 4 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3, for which h of x equals 0. Well. Like earlier, I can't actually take the integral of f of t because I'm not given an equation for it. But we can use the idea of a definite integral of a function being the area under it to help us out. So I know if I want this integral to be 0, that I have to have equal area above and below the x-axis. So let's start by defining a couple areas in our function. I see 1. 2, 3, 4, 5 major areas. This triangle here, a half triangle here, another half triangle, this triangle, and that trapezoid that we looked at earlier. Well, we can remember that the trapezoid's area was 15 halves, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that one in. Now let's take a look at this little triangle right here. Well, I know its height is 2, because I have the point 3, negative 2. And I know its base is going to be 1, because the x-coordinate of this point is 3, and then that one's 2. So recall that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So 1 half times 2 times 1 gives me 1. But it's going to be negative 1, because my region is below the x-axis. So I'll find a similar area for each of these half triangles, right? So I have from 2 to 1, and then from 1 to 0. So the base of each one is 1. And they have a shared height of 2, because the top point is 1, 2. So that gives each of those little half triangles an area of positive 1. And then this little triangle, again, has a height of 2 and a base of 1, making its area negative 1. 
Now, let's take a look at our integral. I know I'm going from x to 3, so my rightmost point has to be right here. But I get to move the left bound. So let's think about the first time where those areas are going to add up. If I go negative 1, and then I add 1, I get 0. And that is where x equals 1. So that's going to be one of my values. Now let's keep going. I know I get to 0 right here. Add 1 to get 1, subtract 1, and I'm back to 0, right? And that's where x equals negative 1. So that's another point. But what if I were to integrate from 3 to 3, right? Let's think about it. Let's make the integral of f of t some arbitrary function. I have to evaluate that function from 3 to 3. So f of 3 minus f of 3, which would give me 0. So I actually have a third x value here, and it's 3. Well, just for the sake of argument, let's keep going to negative 4. I have 0, 1, 0, 15 halves. So I don't have anything on the other side of x equals negative 1 to go to. So 1, negative 1, or 3 are my three answers for part C. Now let's move on to D. So D, again, is talking about the function H. And it asks for h to find all intervals on which h is decreasing, and then explain how you found them. So one way to check to see if h is increasing is to check the sign of its derivative, right? So let's think about what the derivative of h would look like. I know that h of x is the integral from x to 3 of f of t. So if I wanted to just take the derivative, I would get negative f of x. So h prime equals negative f of x. Now let's look at f. We want f to be, we want negative f of x to be negative so that h is decreasing. So I'm actually looking for positive f of x here. You know, it's backwards uh, because of the negative sign. So let's take a look at the graph. I have f of x is negative until 2, and then positive until 0, and then negative the rest of the way. So the only interval where f is positive is from 0 to 2. So that's where the derivative of h is negative, and that's where h would be decreasing. So to explain this, to explain this, <laughs> you would just go through what I just did. You know, say h prime is negative f of x, and then for x between 0 and 2, the derivative of h is negative, so that's when it's decreasing. Now let's take a look and see how we did on this problem. I have my scoring guide here. So let's check out our answer to part A first. So my scoring guide tells me g of negative 1 is negative 15 halves, and that's worth 1 point. And then g prime of negative 1 is negative 2, so that's right, and I get another point. And that g double prime of negative 1 doesn't exist because f isn't differentiable. So got that one right too. And we got all three points on part A. Now let's move to part B. So my answer for part B is x equals 1. And remember, we explained verbally um, about how this point was where f changed from increasing to decreasing. And on this scoring rubric, I get two points for B. One, if I have the answer x equals 1, only x equals 1, no other values. So I do. Now I'm with five points, right? 
Yeah, I'm at four. And then I get one point for the reason. And they actually have the same reason that I did, that f changed from increasing to decreasing. So now I have five points so far, and I got all the points on part B. Let's check my answer on C. So for C, I get two points for having the correct values, negative one, one, and three. So that's right. Um, I would have lost one point if I had an extra value or a wrong value, but I'm good there. Now let's check D. So the answer for D was H is decreasing on 0 to 2. That's right. And then I get one point for my reason, and it's the same thing that we talked about. So H is decreasing if f of x is less than 0. So we get a point for our reason. And that gives me all nine points on this FRQ. So I hope this helps you, uh, you know, practice for your AP exam.